Hello, my name is Estelle Smith, and today I'll be presenting our CSEW 2021 paper titled Effective Strategies for Crowd-Powered Cognitive Reappraisal Systems, a field deployment of the flipped out web application. So as many of us have personally experienced, uh, mental illness is an epidemic and a crisis in our country right now. About 20% of US adults and over 40% of graduate students are routinely diagnosed with mental illnesses such as depression and anxiety, as long as a variety of other types of mental illness. And despite the high rate of uh, incidence of these types of conditions, there's a severe deficit of clinical resources to address them. So simply put, there are not enough therapists in the world to address the, the urgent need for people's mental health care. And on top of this, there's other complicated issues related to stigma for seeking uh, for seeking mental illness resources, as well as financial and racial disparities in terms of who is able to access these resources. As a result of some of these complicated issues, only about 30% of the people who need support actually go and seek clinical help for their condition. And this is a, this is a situation that the COVID-19 pandemic has only exacerbated and made quite a bit worse. So I'd like to offer this provocation. We know that technology, through previous work can actually sometimes have negative impacts on people's mental health, but it's also part of the solution. It's also something that can help to bring us better wellness and, and um, better social connection with others. So I'll offer the provocation that technology has not only the capacity, but also the obligation to help us become better at supporting one another individually and society, individually and societally. So the question then is how can we do that? So prior research argues that technology offers a major opportunity for new and accessible interventions. For example, by expanding the models of delivery that we use to deliver effective therapeutic techniques. A, a growing body of work also suggests that peer support is really crucial to people's success when they are practicing these types of interventions and has explored some factors related how we can provision peer support safely and effectively online. And one of the major questions that's driving this line of work is how can peers effectively help to deliver these clinically valid, validated therapeutic techniques? So one such technique is called cognitive reappraisal. Cognitive reappraisal is a skill that can be taught and is often taught by therapists, for example, of the, from the discipline of cognitive behavioral therapy. And this skill involves reflecting on and altering the emotional meaning of a situation and we do this in order to either increase the amount of positive emotions we're feeling about something or to decrease the amount of negative emotions that we're feeling. This is a really hard skill for a lot of people to learn, and it requires a lot of practice and training to get it right. But encouragingly, one thing that can help is that offering reframes or cognitive reappraisals to others can help us to improve our own skill learning and personal wellness and has been shown to decrease the symptoms associated with depression and anxiety. So flipped out then is a crowd powered prototype that we built, which enables, uh, which provides cognitive reappraisals to users of the system. And we sought to answer two research questions through our study. The first was how do people use a crowd powered cognitive reappraisal application in the wild? And the second was how does context impact perception of reframe quality? And I'll be focusing mostly on reappraisal tactics in this talk. Uh, reappraisal tactics are different strategies that people can take when they are going from the input thought, an input negative thought to a more positive reframe. In order to address these two questions, we completed a month long deployment with 13 graduate students. So this is what the interface looks like. There's a prompt that says purge your thought, which we told participants was about giving the system your negative thought, for example, the input in this case is I don't work out enough. I should be in better shape. So there's the input thought. And we send this thought to mechanical Turkers, crowd workers on Amazon Mechanical Turk in order to have them generate positive reframes. And in this case, there are three examples that came back. The first example is I work out a lot and that is why I am in fantastic shape. This is using the strategy of direct negation it's effectively saying the opposite of whatever the thought was that someone provided to the system. And as we can see, this user rated the thought very low, 0.5 stars. This is the lowest possible star rating that you can give in our system. 
it's apparently not very useful to just state the opposite of what someone said. Another example is, I can start working out more and get in better shape. This is appealing to the person's intrinsic sense of agency to change the situation or do something about it to make it better. And this scored a little bit better than our direct negation tactic. This person got, or this, this, this thought received a two-star rating. Finally, we have an, a third example that did much better than the other two. I love my body, it is mine and does great things for me. So this received a four and a half star rating and is using a tactic of acceptance, appealing to this person's, uh, appealing to this capacity to say, this is what the situation is and actually it's okay the way that it is. So one thing that we found was that some reappraisal tactics seem to work better than others. On the 0 0.5 to 5 star scale, we saw that, for example, the three that I pointed out in the last case were acceptance, agency, and direct negation. Um, but there's many other different types of reappraisal strategies that people can, can use in order to reframe these negative thoughts. And it seems that some of them are better than others. We also looked at different contextual factors that are related to this whole reappraisal process. So for example, what types of things are going on in the input thought? We developed code books that look at the topic of the thought. So things like work, relationships, or home life, um, what we call metatopic. So for example, self-disparagement, regret, rumination, and several others, or whether the topic of the thought is occurring in the past, the present, or the future. And we found that it appears that all three of these categories can impact how people, uh, how people rate the resulting reframe that comes back through the system. The other set of factors affecting uh, how the reframe is rated is how the thought is actually being reframed. So I've already talked about reappraisal tactics, but there's also other meta behaviors that we saw crowd workers using, such as differences in how well their grammar was structured um, and other activities such as acknowledging the main concern of the thought or sometimes introducing new information that wasn't even present in the initial thought. Um, many of these meta behaviors also had a significant impact on how people were uh, rating the reframes. So what can we do with some of these insights that we, that we gained through our study? How can we design crowd-powered cognitive reappraisal systems to effectively help people? One of the learnings that we took away from our participants was that rather than prompting for negative thoughts, we should actually be prompting people for reflection. People felt that if the system is telling them to feed negative thoughts, it can sometimes force them to bring up a negative thought that they had even if they weren't experiencing it in that moment, which can actually have the opposite of the desired effect. Another topic that, or another issue that came up was that rather than having people fit any negative thoughts that they had as they were going through their day into the system, we might want to engage deeply with just a few core issues. So this can re reduce repetitiveness and actually kind of keep people focused on what really matters. The final insight that we'd like to share was that we can take advantage of some of these learnings to develop mechanisms for practice and training that leverage AI and, and machine learning for peer matching, personalization, and moderation. So the paper provides a whole <laughs> a variety of ideas related to how we might implement those things based on our results. So thank you so much for watching this presentation. I would encourage you to reach out on Twitter at Estelle Smith PhD, or you can email me at the email address below. I'd love to hear your thoughts about this work. And I uh, hope that you have a wonderful time at CSCW.